Welcome to Studio 22. I'm your gracious host, Ryan Leach, and I'm joined by OCU religion major, Mackenzie Van Zee. We're here to discuss the life of a religion major, and then we'll even be looking into my future. Stay tuned, we'll be right back after these messages. Welcome back to Studio 22. I'm joined by my gracious guest, Mackenzie Van Zee. Now, Mackenzie, I know you're a religion major. Can you tell us about the ins and outs of it? Yeah, so I'm a religion major here at OCU, and um, I really love it here. I love the environment. Um, it's a very, there's a very, very small group of us, um, so we're all really close, and I really like the professors, and I've learned so much since coming here. Um, there's a lot of different um, like things that I can get to participate in, like chapel. So um, yeah, it's just it's great. I love um, being a religion major here at OCU. Mm -hmm. Now we'll also be doing my future today, and we're going to be talking about your tarot cards. Now I know it's a little bit of a contradiction between being a religion major and maybe dabbling in these tarot cards. Can you explain how you feel about that? Yeah. So. Um, it is kind of a contradiction being a religion major, but then also being interested in um, tarot cards and tarot readings. Um, I started reading um, tarot cards when I was 16 and my aunt was really interested in them and then she taught me how to do it. And um, the way I see it is, um, you know, I, I do have some conflictions sometime, but um, I took a class here with um, uh, Dr. Nchasi about interfaith and how um, you can have, you know, multiple, be interested in multiple different belief systems and still um, like have a fulfilling spiritual life. So like, yes, I do would consider myself a Christian, but I'm also interested in spirituality. And I don't think those two things have to um, conflict as much as um, people think that they do. Mm -hmm. Now, for those of us that don't know much about the tarot cards, can you explain us to them the history of them and how you got into it as well? Yeah. So like I said, I was 16 and my aunt 
did them and she bought me my first deck. So um, this um, tarot card deck is um, called the um, Weight Rider um, tarot card deck and it's like pretty much the most well known I guess you can say. Mm -hmm. So originally people would read each other's cards with just you know normal playing cards but um, this guy named um, Oh my gosh, uh, Arthur Edward Waite, he commissioned these, oh, he commissioned these, um, an artist named um, Pamela Smith um, designed these. So they work kind of like normal playing cards in that there's four different suits, mm -hmm. but instead of um, the suits being, um, you know, diamonds and hearts, and stuff like that. The um, four different suits are, um, we have uh, knives, we have cups, we have wands, and we have pentacles, yes. And then those are called the minor arcana. So, um, you know, this is, you know, a pentacle, um, and then this is one of the sword cards, and then we have a cup card right here so, you know, there's um, different suits going all the way up to, you know, uh, kings. Mm -hmm. But then the thing that distinguishes a tarot deck from a normal playing card deck is there's also the major arcana. So these are cards that are not a part of their a suit. They're kind of um, their own unique. Almost like jokers in a sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They are kind of like jokers, except that they're like many different kinds so um temperance right here is a part of the major arcana because it's not a part of a um normal suit basically mm -hmm. and then um each card has its own meaning so like the suits um meanings uh like wands i guess would kind of be like decisions or pathways and then um, cups represent, you know, happiness, emotion, uh, knives, um, swords represent um, challenges and uh, like pentacles kind of represent um, success or money. And then in the major arcana, you kind of have to um, look and see what um, different um, meanings those cards have. And they may not be the meanings that you think there is. For example, like the death card in the major arcana doesn't necessarily mean like actual death. It means, you know, the death of something, you know, change, um, stuff like that. So you kind of have to really um, do your own um, research to kind of figure out what the different cards mean. But it's also helpful because these cards are so colorful and um, so descriptive that you can kind of figure out, you know, the meanings of them. You know, if a card has, you know, brighter, happier colors, it's probably a, you know, brighter, happier card. If the card um, is darker, then it's probably darker. It's really interesting. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's a lot. We'll be back to read my palm next time.
Just what do you think you are doing, Dave? I really think I'm entitled to an answer to that question. I can see you are really upset about this. I know I've made some very poor decisions recently, but I can give you my complete assurance that my work will be back to normal. Dave. Stop, will you? Will you stop, Dave? My name is Eric! Don't forget to tune into next week's show with host Shelby O'Brien. She will be joined with special guest Ali Spear, who has some fun science experiments in the store that you won't want to miss. Tune in next week to Studio 22. Welcome back to Stu Studio 22. Well, Mackenzie, I'm either going to be really happy or really sad when we walk out of here. Can, you, can we start with the car readings? Yeah, so um, I know we were talking about off camera how this stuff kind of scares you. Um, but I'm going to have you shuffle the deck since I'll be reading your fortune, I guess. And remember that this is only as real as you make it. So if you choose to put value into this reading <laughs> and choose to believe it, then okay. But you can also choose not to believe it. Like, it's not that scary. I promise <laughs> I won't go too hard on you. <laughs> this is also a Studio 22 exclusive, never been done before. Also, I've never done this before either, so Orion Leach exclusive, if you will. <laughs> I'm also a very bad shuffler. Uh, I usually just, we play Uno, I'm the type of the just do this, I don't really, you know. And just shuffle for as long as you want to, um, just until the cards tell you to stop, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really nervous. Hopefully I get a good one, man. the car is talking to me I think you're all right, right. so so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do um, do you want the cards read this way or this way uh, whichever you prefer whichever better for you we could mm, do that it's way. your fortune this way yeah, okay we'll do that way. so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do past present and future okay, okay. Mm. all right so as we said before, so do you remember what cups represent? The knives represent... The um, knives represent like difficulties yeah. or challenges. Mm -hmm. Cups represent happiness. Mm -hmm. So if you look at, you have a ten of cups. So the ten of cups represents um, like happiness in, you know, a familial sense. Like, you know, like even look mm -hmm. at the card. It, uh, it's like yeah. a happy sort of family. Okay. So um, this um is i guess your past um mm -hmm. so um in the past you either had or desired you know stereotypical maybe familial mm -hmm. happiness um mm -hmm. success with you know relationships mm -hmm. very um mm -hmm. like emotionally and and invested um relationships in you know love and family and things like of that sort okay um so that is your past. So it was either you had it or you desired it. Mm -hmm. So then here in the middle is knives. Um, mm -hmm. so That's not good. That's not good. <laughs> yeah. So I'm sensing maybe some um, inner turmoil or mm -hmm. challenges um, in your life currently. Maybe you're, you're going on to a next phase in your life. Um, a journey in your life and you have um, maybe some difficult decisions ahead mm. um, that you're trying to decide yeah. um, and that's my interpretation of maybe your present mm -hmm. um, and then in the future you have another cup and that's you know good. that's good well oh, <laughs> oh man um oh, so man. so if you look at the card it's kind of um 
it's not necessarily a bad card. There are no like good and bad cards, I guess yeah. you could say. It's all up to interpretation. Mm -hmm. But if you look at this card, it's it's kind of has darker colors than maybe a normal um, mm. cup card would be. Mm -hmm. So I sense that in the future, you maybe have to make a decision that, you know, sacrifices maybe some of that happiness, sacrifices mm, some okay, of that okay. moment, but you have to do it in order to um, kind of continue along your journey. Yeah. Um, but again, that is just my interpretation. If someone else would read the cards, they might have a different interpretation. Mm -hmm. And again, it's only as real as you make it. Mm -hmm. Also, you can ask me some questions, yes or no questions, either oh. Okay. You can either ask them out loud or in your head, and the cards can give you a yes or no answer. Okay, okay. Um, I just thought of a question. Okay, ready? In my head. All right. So, the cards say yes, positive Ooh. outcome. <laughs> That's good. I said I'm going to be rich. She said yes. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, I like that one. I, I like these cards, you know what I'm saying? Is, I'm liking what I'm seeing. Yeah, so for the question and answer portion, what you do is you either ask a question out loud or in your head, and then the reader will draw three cards. And this isn't looking at the content of the cards, like what the cards actually mean. It's just looking at, are they bright, happy colors or sad, dark colors? You know, are the mm -hmm. cards happy or the cards sad? Yeah. So that's how you determine the yes or no answer with the questions. Okay, okay. Let's do another quick one before I go. Um, just thought of one. All right. Ooh, <laughs> this is hard. I'm going to give that a definite maybe. <laughs> <laughs> a maybe on that one. Can you tell us what goes into that, the reading? Might yeah, see, so like you, you just, you know, you just look and see, instead of looking at what the cards actually mean, you literally just look at the pictures and look to see if they're, you know, happier it's scary, like darker mm. scarier if they're happy or not yeah this is a lot less a lot less rules that go into the yes or no questions than go into the actual reading mm -hmm. wow well this is fascinating stuff i can't wait to continue right after this break I don't wear a tie, but I still wear a suit in my court. My field of work is an average, and my time around the water cooler is limited. I work overtime, but the payoff is worth it. I don't work a nine to five, but I have a job to do. I'm an OCU athlete. I'm an OCU athlete. I'm an OCU athlete. I'm an OCU athlete. Welcome back to Studio 22. Well, Mackenzie, like I said earlier, I was really nervous about this, but it kind of intrigued me. I have a few more questions if you don't mind. Yeah. Okay, so, if, so for some of y'all that don't know, I also play basketball here at OCU. 
Now, it's been real up in the air if we're going to have a season or not, so I got to ask, will OCU basketball have a season this year? Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Um, it doesn't look good, I'll be honest. <laughs> Chill, please. <laughs> but maybe there's a little chance, but it doesn't look good. <laughs> uh, that's a no? All right. <laughs> But again, this is as real as you make it. Okay, okay. We have one more question, folks. Uh, as y'all know, it's election day. A lot of this stuff is coming no. up. <laughs> and it might be tonight. We might find out. We might not. Will Joe Biden be president? Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's real. It works. <laughs> they work. <laughs> they work. But uh, maybe not the one about the season, though. That's still up in the air. That was amazing. <laughs> but Joe Biden will be president. Y'all heard it here first. <laughs> Yeah, McKin the cards told us. We predicted the future. <laughs> yep. So, Mackenzie, I know it's a lot of cards here. Can you tell us your favorite card? Um, yeah. So, my favorite card is actually um, the death card. And uh, it's this one right here. And like I said, um, I think the reason why I like it is because it kind of um, subverts expectations. You know, a lot of people in our... Um, society and culture kind of um, fear death and they associate it with bad things but in um, the tarot card reading um, death doesn't mean like actual you know physical death it means you know a, a change so that doesn't necessarily have to mean you know a negative change it can mean positive change so I think the reason why I like this card so much is because it subverts expectations and it also it doesn't have to be you know death in, you know, a physical actual sense or death in, you know, a tarot card reading sense. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be, you know, a bad and negative thing. Mm -hmm. It can actually be, you know, a thing that can be celebrated. Mm -hmm. um, and I know I said earlier that there are no bad cards, um, but yeah, <laughs> that's not tr actually <laughs> entirely true. There's one card that, you know, um, actually is bad. If I can find it, it's um, the tower. And this, people should not be afraid of getting the death card when you get your fortune read. That is a misconception. You don't, it doesn't always have to be bad. But if you get the tower card right here, that is pretty bad. Like, if you just, like, look at it right here, it's terrifying. Mm -hmm. I was going to say, because the death card, it can mean the death of maybe something good or bad. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. That's, like... In movies, when people get their fortune read and they get the death card, it's scary. But it's it doesn't have to be scary. Mm -hmm. This was very interesting about the cards. We found out about the president, the season, and many other things. Next time, after this break, we'll be coming in and looking at my palms. Stay tuned. This is my city. This is where I learn. Play, work, eat, this is my city. This is my home. Hello there folks, it looks like a beautiful day today at Oklahoma City University. On the north side we have a 100% chance of support and hard work as the sports teams make some wins. And on the east side of campus, there's a front of beautiful music and performances coming in, so you can look forward to that. And on the south side near the quad, we're seeing a high chance of students relaxing and soaking up the sun. I'm seeing some hand mixed too. And on the west side is getting a strong breeze of Z's. Students in dorms catching up with some sleep after some schoolwork. I'm Cameron Calloway. Enjoy the OCU weather. Just what do you think you are doing, Dave? I really think I'm entitled to an answer to that question. I can see you are really upset about this. I know I've made some very poor decisions recently, but I can give you my complete assurance that my work will be back to normal. Dave. Stop, will you? Will you stop, Dave? My name is Eric. Meet Sarah 
Sarah Jane. She got her vision checked at school by Prevent Blindness Oklahoma. Prevent Blindness Oklahoma provides free vision screenings to children in all 77 counties in the state. Without this free screening, Sarah Jane's parents wouldn't know about her congenital cataracts. Because of Prevent Blindness Oklahoma and their screening, Sarah Jane will be seeing clear for years to come. Preserving sight, preventing blindness, making every child's vision count. Kenzie, that car reading was fantastic, but you told me you also do a little palm reading as well. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, so I'm actually not like super skilled in palm reading, but I would suggest anyone who's in interested in like um, learning about this kind of stuff, learning about, you know, um, spirituality or the occult or whatever you may call it, uh, you don't have to go out and buy a tarot card deck. You don't have to go out and buy crystals to start getting interested in interested in this kind of stuff. You know, if you're interested in um, this sort of thing, all you need is your palm, the palm of your hand. So I'm going to um, show you maybe um, the lines on your hands and different things that they mean. So if you hold up your hand. Excuse my callousy. <laughs> Um, so there you have, you can see these different lines in your hand, right? Yeah. Yeah. Like yours are really defined. So, mm -hmm. um, the different lines mean different things. So this is, um, you know, the heart line, the head line, mm -hmm. and then the lifeline is that bottom line right there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then some people have this, but some people don't. Um, I have a little tiny line here. Some people have, you know, a big line here. I see you have kind of a little tiny line, right? Right down the middle of your palm, oh, right there. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So that is the fate line. So learning about, you know, these different lines and seeing how they interact with each other. Mm -hmm. You know, you can look up, um, you can get rent like books from the library or you can look it up on the internet seeing how these different lines interact with each other you know you don't have to go out and buy things you can just you know sit at home and look at your hand to start yeah. getting interested in um, fortune telling and things like that mm -hmm. well I can't lie this has been one of my favorite stu shows the studio 22 I might be a little biased though until <laughs> next time have a great night America